What up, everyone? Pat Mayo here with your 2020 Week 2 DraftKings picks and preview at each position. Let's start with running backs. Let's jump right into it. Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley, the two highest-priced running backs this week. No one really wants a part of everyone in the world going to Ezekiel Elliott in the shootout game of the week, the highest point total. Dallas, the Falcons, everyone's just loading up on those players, which you probably should. It's a fantastic opportunity. Uh, Derrick Henry, though, is my favorite play of these top four options, $7,900. He projects to be very highly owned as well. If you did want to take the risk, you could go up to Barkley at 84. Like I said, no one's really using him or Clyde Edwards-Hilaire in a nice situation against the Chargers, but everyone just congregating right around Derrick Henry and Ezekiel Elliott. If we drop down the running back list a little bit, Jonathan Taylor screams value at $5,700. No, Marlon Mac, he's going to split time with Naheem Hines, but he's going to be the guy near the goal line and still in the passing game. He's sort of like the good version of Melvin Gordon for the Chargers. So you can use Taylor or Hines really at $5,300, but just lock in Jonathan Taylor. He's expected to be the most high, most popular running back on this slate. I wouldn't really be concerned about that. If you need a pivot at all, in this range. Pivot to David Montgomery if you want to. He's $5,600 against the Giants. He still played 45% of the snaps last week while trailing against the Lions. They're projected to win this game, five-point favorites right now, against the Giants, and it's just a multi-touchdown opportunity for him. We know David Montgomery is not great, but if he gets all the goal line work and he gets 20 carries and maybe sneaks his way into two, three catches, all of a sudden he could outscore Jonathan Taylor. I don't think he's going to outscore Jonathan Taylor, but you'll get David Montgomery at approximately 117th of the ownership. So if he does outscore him, you have a huge leg up on the field. Ronald Jones at $5,200 is the cheap pay down option this week. I don't know what's going on with him as it pertains to his role with LaShawn McCoy, whose role grew in week one. Leonard Fournette, who you would expect to get some more run. If Ronald Jones doesn't get the goal line touches against Carolina, that's going to be somewhat problematic. He'll pile up the yardage. That could be it. So it could be a decent fade spot on Ronald Jones right now. If you're going to pay down, there's two guys that I like to pivot off of him. If you want a cheaper running back, don't love their option, but I do think they have substantial upside. One is DeAndre Swift against Green Bay. At $5,000, that's going to be a pass-happy script. It does appear like Swift is the running back the Lions want to pass to, despite the fact that he loves dropping game-winning touchdowns. I would expect them to go back to DeAndre Swift here, but more importantly, I like Zach Moss for the Bills at $4,800. It's tough to run on the Jets. The one thing they actually do well, Dolphins, not so much. So when we think about Zach Moss, you have to think, well, he was outsnapped by Devin Singletary last week. But the value of Zach Moss's touches are really important. They're all basically inside the 20. 10 carries last week, seven of them came inside the Jets' 20-yard line. Three of them came from inside the five-yard line. He was using that goal line package that got him a receiving touchdown. So he's on the field when the Bills are in score zone. That's huge. And against a bad Dolphins defense, especially in the interior where Zach Moss is going to patrol, that is a potential multi-touchdown game. So that is the situation where I would take a gamble on Zach Moss over someone like Ronald Jones, despite Ronald Jones being in the better situation. Fade that chalk, move to the other way. Let's move to receiver. Devontae Adams, DeAndre Hopkins, two highest priced guys, probably the two best plays of the week. If you go to ftndaily.com and check out the wide receiver cornerback index that Jeff Radcliffe has up there right now, you will find the three best receiving matchups of the week versus bad corners, Devontae Adams, Allen Robinson, and Mike Evans. And that is presuming that Chris Godwin is going to be it. Whether he plays or not, Evans is going to be on the outside and have a terrific matchup. Godwin may or may not play with this concussion, so watch out for him. But at the same time, if you can squeeze in Adams, do it. Just like last week, he is still under price. He should be $9,000. He is not. He is in a terrific situation. Use Devontae Adams. I mean, I don't think he's going to sustain a 45% target share for the year, but, you know, pushing 40 with the rest of that team, you know, Lazard, Marcus Valdez, Scantling, you know, you're probably just going to throw to Devontae Adams. He's probably going to be wide open because the entire Lions secondary is out. So use Devontae Adams. Uh, And DeAndre Hopkins is just going to torch the footballs this week. They have no perimeter corners whatsoever. You throw outside the numbers against Washington, uh, you're dealing with almost a 10% touchdown rate per target. That is insane. And that's where DeAndre Hopkins is going to be this week. If you pay down a little bit more, Juju and DJ Moore and DJ Chark in that $6,000 area are all looking like terrific pivots off of Amari Cooper, who is going to play with dealing with a foot injury and is going to be incredibly popular, as is Mike Evans this week. But all three of those guys projected under 5%. 
you want to pay down this week, uh, there are two really good options. One is Deontay Johnson at $4,500. The other, Mike Williams at $4,200 against the Chiefs, who are missing bits of their secondary in a projected game script where you're going to see a lot of passing. A lot of people are going to like Scotty Miller or Justin Watson as their pay down options. No, 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 no. Give me Mike Williams. He dominates the Chiefs, and he was like the first look for Tyrod Taylor all of last week, and this is a much better game script for Mike Williams. You want to go even lower? Kenny Galladay is not playing this week, so don't worry about Marvin Jones. You want to save that money? Quintez Seifer in the $3,000 range could be a spot where you go to. Paris Campbell, also a decent paydown option with Michael Pittman banged up and no Jack Doyle. No Jack Doyle brings us to tight ends. No George Kittle brings us to tight ends. If you're going to pay up, it's going to be for Mark Andrews. Too expensive for me. Pass. Hunter Henry would be the highest I would go because I do like that matchup, like I said, in a pass-happy script against the Chiefs. But realistically, this is where you're going to save your money this week. You have two options. Logan Thomas at 36, Chris Herndon at 34. Both are going to be popular. Both are in excellent situations. The Jets have no one left, especially with Jamison Cratter out. It's going to be all Herndon all the time, especially as seven-point dogs at home. If you wanted to pivot off of those two guys and fade some of that ownership, which I don't recommend, you can go up to Dalton Schultz and get a piece of that high-scoring Cowboys-Falcons game or pivot down with no Jack Doyle, potentially no Michael Pittman, with no Trey Burton. You have Mo Ali Cox at a pretty reasonable price. I have no idea what his target share is going to be. But he's going to be on the field for the Colts. Uh, and as we saw last week, you can pass all over the Vikings defense. So maybe Ali Cox gets himself into the red zone, gets himself into the end zone, and gets some targets from Phillip Rivers. He historically likes tight ends. Why not now? Defense, it's easy. You don't need to pay up. You need to save money somewhere this week. Fade the Rams against the Eagles and just take the Eagles against the Rams at home. Now one point favorites, $2,600. Eighth in pressure rate since the beginning of last season. Sixth in adjusted sack rate last week. No one wants to play them because they got beat by Washington. Who cares? That was week one. We're now talking about week two. Jared Goff, bottom five touchdown rate, top five interception rate when under pressure. The Eagles are going to get pressure against them in this close game. If you can get 35 pass attempts from Jared Goff, we are in the money with the Eagles defense. Don't like them? Drop 100 bucks. go to the Colts. We saw what happened to Kirk Cousins under pressure last week, and the Colts very sneakily top five in adjusted sack rate from week one. Bring that pressure, get to Kirk Cousins. Fantasy points in soon. If you really want to go down and save some money, the Dolphins at $2,100, not a great situation as underdogs at home. Maybe they can play it somewhat close, but Josh Allen, friend of fantasy defenses by just handing them the ball, he does score some points. I'm not concerned about points against. It's not like a thing. I want teams throwing against me. If we can get this to be somewhat of a close game, it's only a five-point spread now. It's dropping a little bit towards the Miami Dolphins that if you can get 25 pass attempts from Josh Allen, then you're looking good as the Miami defense because uh, they'll probably turn the ball over twice during the game, maybe take a few sacks. The Bills probably still win, but at the same time, uh, it's only $2,100. You get eight points out of them. You're looking good, and they allow you to get up to the Henrys, to the Saquon to the Adams, to the Hopkins, whoever you want to get at the top end, that's how you save the money. If you're looking for the full DraftKings breakdown, I suggest you check out Mayo Media Network on YouTube. That is my channel where the Pat Mayo experience lives right now. My DraftKings cheat sheet is up on DKPlaybook.com, as is the rest of my football content, including the spread picks, props, and weekly fantasy football rankings. Thank you all for watching. Good luck this week. I'll see you next time.